We're going to be talking today a bit about virtual meetings mm -hmm. and keeping people engaged in the process. Um, yeah. yeah. But before we jump into any of that, how are you doing? How's yeah, your business? Yeah, still good. Still very busy. I uh, had a little bit of holiday. Inadvertently over half term, of course I wasn't expected, but yeah. as you know we went to World of Learning yeah. when we were planning to have a holiday, so we did the exhibition at World of Learning and, and, uh, and banked a holiday a couple of weeks, so we just had a week off, uh, and it's okay because we weren't going away, so we, we didn't even notice that the kids were off really, yeah, yeah, yeah nice, yeah, bit of theatre, a few nice meals out. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, and back to it this week, catching up. <laughs> As well, how, well, how was World of Learning, do you think? World of Learning was interesting. Um, I mean, I, my, my overall summary of it would be that the footfall was, was very low, and that we, we noticed that. Yeah. So I think the numbers were something like 7,500 normally that okay. would go through the doors over the two-day exhibition at the NEC. I think it's like two and a half they got. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Seven, so, seven and a half before COVID. Yeah, yeah, before COVID. So we, so the punters didn't really come back yeah, yeah. like, like, perhaps I'd have thought they would have because yeah. people had been in, interested, keen to get out, etc. Mm -hmm. um, didn't seem to happen. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it'd be it'd be good to watch what happens in the future with these things. Whether they, you know, whether they come back. It might be a very gradual thing if they mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. But from that end, we didn't get many leads, mm. which is a, a problem. Yeah, yeah. Problem. it's a problem. You spend a lot of money to get there, and you don't get get much out of it. Um, but we have got a very strong opportunity that we're we're into proposal with already, and mm. so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it feels like such high. It's high risk, high reward, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It really, might only come away with one really strong one. Yeah. It's like, wow, if you didn't get that, it's just yeah. dead. Yeah, dead absolutely. Time, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. But had you not have been there, oh yeah, you, yeah. you wouldn't get that yeah. one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting yeah. to see. Uh, we have another exhibition this month for another arm of the business. Yeah. In a slightly different sector, kind of more marketing. So yes. it'll be quite interesting to see what it's like there. It and will. Yeah. Whether there's a difference between. Who attend the attendance in different industries? Yes. I don't know. I, my feeling is this one we're going to in November is much bigger, generally, yeah. Bigger, yeah. like more stands, more areas, different sections. Yeah. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Yeah, it's well, London as well. So well, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that changes things, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. cool. So anyway, let's let's have a, a chat about online meetings. Can you tell yeah. me about the? kind of inspiration behind talking about this as a subject. I know you've had a few interactions recently that yes. makes you want to think about it. Yeah, so, so uh, effectively we're putting a course together for a couple of clients who have been asking for this uh, because a lot of managers are finding they're struggling with online meetings. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of different struggles. I think the, the struggle comes from different places. So there's, there's a struggle of invisibility, so people not being visible. Uh, there's a survey by Slido that came out last September in 2021. Uh, so that's not last September, it's a year ago now, but came out a year ago. And that was that was really damning about engagement on on online in online meetings. So it was roughly saying sort of 45, 48% of the time people are disengaged and, and lots of ways that they are, but it was a very high percentage that they were proposing. And then anecdotally talking to people doing hybrid management, hybrid team working. Anecdotally, a lot of managers have been saying to me, I really struggle to get people to contribute. I feel like I'm the only person talking and there's definitely silence when I ask a question and, and then I just have to fill the vacuum. And so it doesn't feel natural yeah. uh, and uh, where well, it feels stunted, mm. really, I guess. So there is a problem. There's a genuine problem, I think. The fact that we've lifted the meeting from the traditional face-to-face -face room, yeah. the meeting room, yeah. into the remote world and tried to run it in the same way. And maybe that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. So we've been developing and looking at other people's research as well around this, but we've been developing some pathways really or some big, big themed ideas around how do you change that? How do you make a, a hybrid meeting different to a face-to-face -face meeting? Mm -hmm. And there are specific problems with hybrid as well. So if we talk true hybrid, people have to, to use these terms interchangeably. But if we talk about really hybrid, you might have two or three people in a room and then other people on 
Team Zoom or Google Meets or whatever they're using. Mm -hmm. So you've got a mixture of the same thing happening. It's not quite the same as a remote meeting because everyone's online at that point. Same problems, by the way, in a remote meeting, but it makes it even harder when you've got some people co-located and other people dispersed. Yeah. It brings its own unique set of challenges mm -hmm. with that. So, yeah. so what, how, how do we do that? How do we work, work around that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. And so to that end, you have kind of a few, uh, five ideas to yeah. introduce to kind of help combat some of those issues. So yeah. let's jump in. What, yeah, yeah. What's your first one? Yeah, so simply, um, I, 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 I think opening sequences are always important. I, I've, I've always believed that, you know, in, in things like training, your opening two or three minutes can make a major difference to the way the whole thing runs. Mm -hmm. So this is simply... Uh, as a sense of conditioning you know at, at the beginning of a, a training session face to face or online I would always work harder how am I conditioning the right behavior for that session mm -hmm. now what we're proposing then is a, a, a meeting is no different to that you need in the opening minute or a minute or two or three that opening sequence needs to really condition some outcomes we need to be uh, very specific in that first meeting about what is going to be happening, how we're going to be doing that, what is expected behaviourally maybe mm -hmm. in, in that, so that we are immediately nudging some good behaviour rather than inadvertently doing things that leave people in this sort of observer mode, as I'm going to call it, you know, they're kind of, I don't even need to be seen because I'm just observing what's going on, not mm -hmm. con con contributing. So there's, there's a couple of things with this. What, one for me comes out of the topic of recency and primacy. So recency and primacy is a neuro-linguistic programming idea and basically uh, it's, it's very easy to prove, it's a real phenomena, but says primacy, the first thing we do are in effect the, the most influential and recency, the last thing we do are also um, quite, quite influential. It's actually often in the middle where, where influence drops out or retention um, drop, drop, drops out. So yeah, the, the recency and, and privacy model argues that if you don't capitalise on that opening sequence, then you are really missing a trick. So again, the opening minute or two, you need to be doing things that are setting the context of how you want this meeting to run. Now here's a real, real life example. Uh, and this I found over the last two years, you know, doing lo loads of online stuff. If you're not on camera when the first people joins, it's m I find it's much harder to get other people on camera compared to you're there before everyone else, you're already on camera and the first person comes in the room, they're more likely to switch their camera on mm -hmm. in that moment. And then the next person comes in, there's two people already on camera. And then, it's, so it's self-fulfilling to some extent, but it's a nudge. You know, if, if I start a meeting and I'm not even on camera, uh, and I'm not the first one there to set that, the, the, yes, uh, set that stack in motion, as it were, then I can suddenly find I've got a whole bunch of people on camera, so I, I'm not on camera, so I switch mine on, but nobody joins me in that moment. They're now in observer mode and they're not, uh, not, not engaged. So that's one little idea around primacy where, you know, as the chairperson, I'm going to be there first, I'm, which means I've got to allow myself the time to, to log in before everyone else, and I'm going to sit there, mic open, camera open, right, right at that moment. So that's a little one of those little pushes, one of those little nudges to, to bring back good good outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other things uh, we, we could add to that. So, what do I say? What do I tell the group at that that point in time? What what are my instructions? Um, all, all, all part of that really, but that's kind of bleeding into my, my second point okay. in a way. Tell me the title of your second point and then I might ask you a question at this point or I might hold it for later. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to call it, let's call it providing a clear role for yep, okay. your team members. Yeah, so all I'm thinking is, um, okay, so I will say this now because I yep. think it might be, um, might be helpful then. If, if our listeners are listening to this um, kind of set of helpful tips as you go through this podcast and you yeah. think you might end up thinking well that wouldn't apply to this meeting because I don't need people to uh, respond to me I need them to listen to me or yes. in this meeting these people's role is to listen to me or, yeah. and as we go through this is it worth listeners then asking the question well is is the meeting the right format because exactly um, yeah. yeah 
I think a lot of times probably people's gripes who are talking to you about this sort of thing is that oh, this could this just have been an email? Do I really need to waste my time sitting in a meeting? So perhaps these these this is also a helpful gauge of whether yeah. okay, well could I just is this a transaction? Do I just need to send an email to these people? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. do we need to actually get something back from them? Totally, yeah, completely on board with that. And whilst I'm covering these five ideas today, um, on, our, on our course that we've developed around this, the setup is really critical. And one of the setup pieces is do you need this? Yeah. You know, it, does this work? And if you're, so we have a 10, we've got a little model of 10 purpose statements that I think covers. Any meeting in the world, if you having a if you're having a meeting, you ought to be able to say it's one of these these purposes. Yeah. Uh, but if your purpose is sitting there going, this is information share, then back to what you just said. Mm. Did, you, there's better ways to do information share. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a meeting, so forget the meeting. Mm -hmm. Like you say, send an email or a document or something mm -hmm. or a video or or, or, or you know, anything, but you don't necessarily need a meeting just for information share. Yeah. Now, a lot of business meetings, sadly, <laughs> I think, are in that territory. Yeah. You know, it feels like, okay, here's our weekly update, and it's all about sharing a project update or something, yeah. as opposed to, I'm going to my second point, yeah, giving people a role. Mm -hmm. So I, I think in that opening sequence, one of the things we've got to say is, is um, this is what I'm expecting each of you to do. Now, there might be different roles for different people, but you've got to be overt about this. I'm not going to assume you know what I expect from you. So I might, I'm thinking on my, on my feet here, but if, if, if you said this was a meeting to share information, I, I would groan and kind of go, oh, yeah. yeah. But, but if I suddenly say, um, this is a meeting where uh, I'm gonna need you to take away some actions from this, this session and, and put them into practice by December the 3rd or, or, or whatever. That's now an action orientation. So rather than I'm just sharing information, I'm being overt about what I expect you to do with that information in, in, in reality. Mm -hmm. So it, knowing what your purpose for that meeting is helps you seed that, helps you decide what words you need, mm -hmm. but but giving, giving people a role. Don't just allow them to be observers but tell them what you expect them to do as a result of this this meeting um, what's the output mm -hmm. uh, and the more action orientated the, the, the better mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, we don't we don't do that a lot you know uh, to bono six hats techniques give people gives people roles in a meeting I've come across yeah. that some people will have heard of it and so that is more about contribution to me it's a good technique for this actually you could say uh, so you might have the yellow hat which is the optimistic viewpoint you might have the white hat which is the information viewpoint or the black hat which is the pessimistic viewpoint from the the, the, the de bono six hat model and uh, that's quite useful because they are roles actually so I might say uh, Josh, I'm going to ask you metaphorically to wear the yellow hat and be the optimist in the room about this meeting. So, so just contribute what you think is great about it, what's positive, what the upside might be. But John over here, uh, I'm going to ask you to take the pessimistic view on this meeting. So I want you to be openly critical of what we're talking about and, uh, and, and critique and challenge. But uh, I don't know. Um, Jane, I want you to take a, uh, a sort of a, a data information process view of this meeting. So I want you to comment on whether you feel th these steps are correct or what steps would improve something. Or you know. yeah. so, so, so that's another way of giving people active roles. Mm -hmm. And then you can expect that in a, in a meeting, but also drive it. I can go back and say, okay, Josh, you haven't said anything yet. What, what's your optimistic view then of yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Um, from, from, from that. So I think Debono Six Hats could be a useful tool in, in a hybrid environment. Um, but the bottom line is giving people an action orientated objective, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, give them a rule. Great. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. Got three more. So Yeah, yeah. So my third idea is that we need to implement a very clear structure of what's happening within the meeting. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is we often would set up a meeting, uh, we might even, if we're, if we're good at it, we might say what the purpose of that meeting is, sometimes that doesn't even happen, but we, we, we might say this is what we're trying to do, uh, so let's talk about it. 
Yeah, and there isn't any structure in, well, how do we go from where we are to here today to where we want to be at the end of this 30 minute meeting, mm -hmm. hour meeting, half, 10 minute meeting. So I, I, I propose that, and this is a pre-work thing, you can't do this on the hoof. This means you've got to prepare for the meeting in a different way, but I, we're going to define a process to get from A to B. So again, this is an opening sequence thing that you're going to be putting on the table, but we're going to be saying, this is the purpose, this is what we're going to be doing, this is the role, what I expect you to do with this, how you want you to contribute during the meeting and after the meeting. But look, here's the process that we're going to work through to get us from, from A to B. So that could be a whole array of different things. So it, the, the, the sort of simplest thing might be, okay, I'm going to position a topic. I would like everyone to comment on that, and then we'll make a decision. That's a process, but I'm being, just being a little bit more structured about yeah. what I'm expecting of people to to get through the journey that we need need to make. Yeah. Now, there's lots of variants on that. You might say, um, okay, I'm going to position something here, and then I'm going to put you into some small groups in a breakout, and uh, then get you to come back and feedback what your group thinks about this topic, and then maybe we'll use a voting tool slido.com or whatever, uh, something within MS Teams, uh, we, we use a voting tool to make the decision after that. That's a process. Mm -hmm. So I'm just being much more clear about how we're going to make the journeys that we need to make. Now, there, there might be multiple journeys in a, in a meeting, but if I haven't planned them, then they just go back to the malaise of observer and, and no, no clear contribution. Mm -hmm. Um, and become less efficient as well. Yeah, basically. for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Uh, and and that's almost leading to my next point about the, the keeping it short and sharp, which yeah. I'll come back to. But uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I might have multiple little process steps. We, we're going to do this thing. This is how we're going to do it. Then we're going to do this thing. This yeah. is how we're going to do it. Yeah. So I might have multiple things like that. I might only have one of them. But the, but the thing I would say, if I have got multiple, I'm going to try and do them differently. Mm -hmm. So the first one I might say, okay, we're going to position, we're going to do, have a breakout, and then we're going to come back and we're going to vote. Um, the second one, I, I might want to just try and do something different, uh, and it's maybe a simple topic. I'm going to go, okay, we'll position the topic, we'll have quick discussion about that here in the in the forum, uh, and then and then we vote. So you know, just not having the breakout within that, but just sort of mixing it about a little bit. Um, not keeping each of those cycles the same, mm -hmm. uh, keep, keep, keep them moving. And that keeps people on the toes as well. It stops people becoming lethargic and in a groove mm -hmm. because the groove keeps changing. Mm -hmm. So I need to listen out for what that, that uh, process is for this particular stage cycle of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. yeah, good. All right, time and efficiency. Yeah, so, so the up. fourth idea that I've got here has to do with... Um, timing of the cycle yeah so we, we're just saying we've got multiple cycles within a meeting mm -hmm. um, there, there is actually a, an emerging practice to have one cycle one purpose for our meeting and assign a time slot to that so there's a common practice that, that people do so, so I might say this meeting is to discuss and, and make a decision on this thing and we're going to take 17 minutes so I always quite like that idea that, and we have a timer running on the screen mm -hmm. because it kind of drives some urgency about yeah. okay we've only got 17 minutes to do this yeah but interestingly uh, some research I touched on uh, found from Harvard suggests that those cycles ought to be even much quicker than 17 minutes so uh, so Harvard argue that you want those cycles to be no longer than five to ten minutes before you set a new challenge a new cycle for, for the team so that's really short mm -hmm. that is a whole different ball game to how meetings tended to run face to face so it's yeah. it's stepping up the um, interval of the meeting in a way that doesn't compare to how we used to we've been we, we've been used to running meetings so my i have a metaphor for this in my head because there's a you know my, my head's full of this at the moment you know josh i've been racing this year for the first time proper racing in a in a race championship uh, so I, I you know i've driven a car on the road for many years for the last 20 years on and off i've been doing something called sprinting which is just you against the clock on a track so it is proper motorsport but it's not racing it's just you against the clock 
Well, like sprinting is a league difference from driving on the road, yeah, in terms of the speed, the approach to it. Um, but what I discovered beginning of this year doing racing for the first time is that racing's another league of, of speed. I mean, I was 10 seconds behind the lead pace of my first race at Alden Park beginning of the season. I mean, that's, that's like, I was nowhere. I was absolutely nowhere. And I was somebody who'd been doing sprinting and I would, I would see that was a step up from road use. But then there's a step up to, to, to racing. So I, I think this is kind of like that. You, you can say we had face-to-face -face meetings that, that ran at an interval that had a sort of very, real, often a very relaxed, discussive pace to it. This is a whole different board game. If I harbor the same five to 10 minutes. Now, I'm, I'm probably of the opinion that 15 minutes wouldn't hurt. That would be better. You know, so if you had an hour, you've got the opportunity for four cycles. We can do four things in, in that hour. Now, if you take, of course, if you take Harvard to heart, you could say, well, I could do six things. I could get six things sorted in that, that meeting, and maybe that's changing it. But it does rely on that prep work of saying, what's the process? Yeah, it's going to have to be really yeah. well organised for to do that and that level really. on a cycle. Yeah, yeah, really. But it's quite exciting as well. It's quite, you know, it's quite a different way to approach something. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and again, it's part, yeah, we said it, I said at the beginning, the opening sequence, you have to nudge this expectation that people are kind of expecting it to be this fast paced, cyclical approach to the meeting. But, um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I'd, it, it, it's a, it's a, whole different approach where it's difficult to duck out yeah and that's quite important isn't it and it's kind of my final point really mm -hmm. that it, as soon as people start ducking out they become the observer role it's really hard to get get them back mm -hmm. so m my sixth my sixth fifth mm -hmm. idea is really just saying once you've got that pace you've got to keep it up don't get tricked into letting something run too long, letting it slow down, letting letting somebody talk too much and, and not not uh, you know keep to your 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 paciness mm -hmm. as you work through. That's hard. That's a facilitation job. Yeah. Aided by the fact that you've been quite careful in planning the meeting and how that meeting is going to run beforehand. But um, still need some control as the chairperson and some facilitation skills to go, okay, thank you very much, Josh, that's, that's, that's useful, that's helpful, let's move on to somebody else's opinion, uh, and just sort of having the handle on managing that mm. and, and keeping the pace up. Mm -hmm. You can always start with good intent yeah. and find that you've got somebody who talks a lot, mm -hmm. has strong opinions about something, and... Uh, certainly at the beginning, if you've got a regular team who aren't used to doing it at this pacey, they could feel short-changed to yeah. some extent, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, this is important, and I haven't you know, been able to fully articulate my, my argument mm -hmm. and my, my, my position. So I think there's challenges in this idea, but at the same time, um, we need to do something different. <laughs> I mean, some of that, the way, some of your setup or your process mm -hmm. will, will be a bit dictated by like how many people are in that meeting. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah, you're not going to have five minutes if you've got ten people. You need well, maybe that would work, but there would be some maths involved. Yes, it would. Yeah, if people need to have some input here. We need to make it enough time for them to actually say something meaningful. Yeah, otherwise yeah. you're just doing it for the sake of it, and that yeah, does become yeah. as annoying as having a disengaged meeting, probably. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I see that that um, manage that kind of character management side of it as quite. It's going to be really important, isn't it? It is. You, not yeah. only you're going to have people yeah. who <clears throat> potentially take up a bit more time than this guy over here, but you might also have characters who tend to try and drag back to this part of the yeah. process rather than keep us going. Actually, we're finished with that. We're finished with that cycle. Yeah, yeah. We're in a different one now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah. keeping your yeah. eye on that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a real management skill, I think, during the course of, course of the meeting itself. Mm -hmm. And yet, a larger room, a larger group of people is always going to be much more difficult than yeah. when we've only got a few, you know, yeah, two yeah. or three people, yeah. uh, that, that's, that's, or three or four people, that's yeah. much easier than 10 to 15 yeah. people say. But I think a lot of the time people are running relatively small sessions yeah, yeah. or with their teams that might be a manager with five or six yeah. direct reports or something. Yeah. So it's those types of, types of meetings where you can 
Yeah. The tools become useful to you. Yeah. The, the, the prep and, and the tools help with all of that, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, stopping people retreating <laughs> uh, and disappearing is, is part of the challenge. And keep, get, I think it's one of those things, if you get people used to this idea, we, we are going to run these things at a pace, mm -hmm. they'll get used to it. Yeah. They'll start to get used to it. The other solution in that, I think, that came to mind when you, you said that was use the tech. So you know, using voting, using sharing tools, knowing what's out there. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them emerging. Myra, Slido, mm -hmm. um, Jamboards. It, there's loads of these tools that have come to the fore over the last couple of years and yeah. people are getting used to. You know, that, that's use them. That's use the technology to get different behavior and mm -hmm. quicker decisions mm -hmm. and quicker cycles. Yeah. yeah. So if I just summarise that, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. So I think it is like first minute nudging. How are you taking advantage of the primacy effect and influencing the outcome in a way that mirrors the behaviour you want? Yeah. You know? um, secondly, am I am I emphasising the shared responsibility? and giving people clear roles, mm -hmm. what I expect them to do during the meeting, what their contribution is, how they're going to contribute, what they do with that afterwards. So action-orientated, objective, action-orientated roles. Uh, thirdly, how I set my process. Do I know for each of these cycles within the meeting how I'm going to run that, what tools I'm going to use, what the structure of that is, because I'm going to need to articulate that and have a very highly structured brief for each of the cycles. Uh, fourthly, how do I keep this pacey? Harvard say five to ten minutes, e you know, even if you're just thinking how do I make each of these cycles just 15 minutes would be an improvement. But think about how many people I've got, how long do I need for this, what's the structure dictating around how long it's taken, but keep it short and snappy. And then fifthly, keep that pace up, don't get hijacked. Make sure you're facilitating in a way that ensures people uh, move on and keep keep the interval up as you're working through it.